This is the Echo Core 500, and I'm gonna show you how it's every bit as futuristic as it looks. You've probably never seen an actual stethoscope with a screen on it, and I hadn't either until a few weeks ago. Today, I'm gonna get into everything from the good, the bad, the price point, my opinion clinically as an emergency medicine physician, and what this device can actually do for you. Now again, a big thank you to Echo Health, and if you wanna try one out for yourself, the link will be down below, but I'm sure first you wanna hear about this product, so let's get into it. Check this out, this is truly fly-by-wire technology. That's right, there's no tubing connection that I know of. It seems to be all electrical, running to almost an AirPod-style earbud. And I'm told that inside of here, there's an actual speaker on both ends. So you have the bell and the crazy computer that we'll get into in a little bit, and then an actual amplifying digital plug-in stethoscope. This is truly next-gen stuff, and you might be excited to hear again that there is 40 times sound amplification, which is the same as the core. There is an eight times improvement in reduction of the background noise, and it is dramatic. When you put this in, you literally, it's like putting in earplugs. I cannot hear anything outside of me. In fact, I have a desk fan on. I'm not sure if you could even hear it on camera. Probably not. This totally silences that. It silences the noise outside. Things like ambulances driving by, you can still hear, but very impressive compared to a standard stethoscope, even with the noise canceling turned on from the core. You might notice that the earpieces are a bit thicker. That's because within here there's true sound technology. Now Echo Health has essentially engineered their own version of a stethoscope headphone. This thing has incredible amplification, clarity, and again helps with the background noise filtration. Having actual speakers in the ears, in one in each ear, makes it very very clear when you're listening to lungs or the heart. The ability to auscultate clear sounds, and I'll show you, that's what this does here with different function modes. In fact, that leads me to my first point of this review that has blown me away with the Core 500. Pulmonary mode. Now, listening to hearts, I'm not a cardiologist. I listen, it beats, it's irregular, it's not irregular. We'll get into that in a second. But to me, one of the big important factors is listening for breath sounds. Of course, in trauma, I need to know if there's bilateral breath sounds, but specifically, if I have a patient that comes in and they're, they're very tight, they're an asthmatic, maybe it's asthma versus COPD, maybe they have CHF and asthma. Are they wheezing, are they crackly, are they just so tight you can't hear anything? A lot of times I think clinically we listen, we sort of hear something, we say they're diminished, or maybe they have some faint crackles. I have never heard anything like this. Truly, it gave me goosebumps the first time I heard an asthmatic with this in the pulmonary mode. And it's night and day when you switch the modes. Wide is great if you're just doing a quick exam. Cardiac, good for the heart, of course, and we'll get into all of this, but when I switched on pulmonary, it's very sensitive. There's some downsides I'll get into in a moment, but when you hear lung sounds, it is like nothing I've ever heard. Better than the recordings, in fact, that you go and look up on YouTube. It is almost like they're preloaded in here, but these are the real patients and you are hearing their lungs. I have no doubt when I listen, especially on the pulmonary setting, what I'm hearing. In fact, I heard very faint crackles on a patient just last week. I threw an ultrasound probe on, and sure enough, there were some beelines confirming exactly what I thought, and got the chest x-ray and confirmed further. So within seconds of seeing the patient, I knew it. Now, I'm not saying a regular stethoscope, you wouldn't hear that, but I don't know. I've been doing this now for three years clinically. I've been playing with the Echo Core for many years and now the Core 500 just for a few weeks and it's like nothing I've ever heard. So what's the downside? What's my complaint about pulmonary? Well, like I said, it's really sensitive and I'm told from Echo Health that they are working on this and tweaking this. Again, this is an early version so I'm very fortunate to have early access. I'll tell you that if you move this around, for example, across someone's chest hair or across their clothing, on pulmonary, it's loud. And I keep the volume up pretty high on this because the ER is pretty loud. It's not a comfortable sound. So that's something to be aware of. If I'm gonna use it on pulmonary, I'm very deliberate. I place it onto the chest, I take it off the chest and move it and place it back down because otherwise, <laughs> you get a really unpleasant loud noise. All in all, I'd say a small price to pay for the incredible quality. Who needs a digital screen on a stethoscope? Well. I'm going to show you why you need that and why it's incredible. First of all, of course, the simple things, your battery life, whether you're connected, and you can see as I touch it, it makes a connection with the three lead and tells me that I do have a connection for some kind of an EKG tracing. And this, we're on pulmonary mode. We can cycle through again a cardiac. You'll see the little cardiac come up here and change. So a lot of information is given to you, but where this really shines is in the little three lead that you can get. 
Now, this is a mini rhythm check, if you will. So listening, of course, we can listen for things like atrial fibrillation, but this actually gives you a visual confirmation of what you're seeing. Does it look regular, irregular? And of course, when paired with the Echo app, you have AI AFib detection. And you can record and save your data. It's pretty cool all around. I think that the murmur detection is really cool. I haven't found how it fits into my clinical practice yet. To be honest, in the emergency department, I get a lot of EKGs. If I have a concern about an arrhythmia, I'm gonna get an EKG. And usually, I've listened to thousands of hearts by this point, I can tell within just a couple seconds if it's atrial fibrillation. Again, if you've done this for thousands of hours and many, many years, then you know roughly what the rate is just from listening for two or three seconds. You can tell if it's above 100, below 100, below 50. You know, there's various, you just hear things, you get used to hearing them. The device isn't quite that quick, and while it works fantastically, it's not just gonna spit the number out. So you do have to give it some time to work. Now, while it does show a rhythm strip, on the pulmonary mode, it does does not have anything to display. Of course, there's no rhythm to our respiratory rate outside of a, maybe a graph. They say that the device is splash and scratch resistant as well as shatter resistant. Now, I'm not going to test that out. This is the only one that I have and I'm loving using it, but I can tell you banging it around into and off of things at work, it's done very well. It has no real damage. In fact, the metal on it, I thought at first was getting scratched, but with a little bit of a wet cloth, it just cleaned right up. You can see in the close-up shots here that the screen has a great sheen to it, and it doesn't pick up a ton of fingerprints. It also easily wipes clean after dragging it across your scrub, so that's a quick, easy way to clean it. Looking around the device, there aren't many scratches, but if you look on the bottom at the contact points where it does touch the patient, you do notice some small scratching. This is only after a few weeks of use, but I'm not sure how much of this actually matters versus cosmetic. Now, for my tech nerd, here are some stats. If you know your stuff about water resistance, this is IP44 rated. That basically means we're splash and dust resistant, and that's a good thing because we're constantly wiping down our devices and getting them wet and God knows what other fluids. How long does this thing last? I mean, there's a computer in your stethoscope and actual speakers in each of your ears. It must drain the battery quickly, right? Well, Echo Health says that it lasts about 60 hours of normal clinical use. For 10 hour shifts in the ER, that's six shifts in a row. Now I'll tell you, I've been using it for a few weeks now and my same experience that I had with the core, this thing just does not drain battery. I haven't charged it once and it hasn't seemed to have moved from where I got it out of the box. It charges with USB-C, but again, I haven't even had to use it. I am consistently impressed by the Echo Health products and how long they last because I am the king of forgetting to charge things like the speaker that I bring to work, my phone before a night shift, and especially a stethoscope, flashlight, or other accessories. So it's a good thing that this lasts a long time. So if you made it this far, you're obviously interested and you probably want to know the price. Well, to pick up the Echo Core digital attachment alone, it's costing about $259 on the website right now. If you were gonna spring for the combo in color, it's $399. Now you might be nervous for the stethoscope with the computer, with all these different auscultation modes and a one lead ECG and speakers in your ears. This only costs $429 you can literally get the brand new upgraded version with a screen with all these features for $30 more than the colored version of the original. Now, I still love this device and there's nothing wrong with it, but for $30 more, it's a pretty good option. However, I do recognize as one of the other downsides that this is an expensive product. $429 is nothing to scoff at. And for students, that can be a lot of money. Realistically speaking, do you need this device? Absolutely not. Of course, like anything else, you can practice medicine with the previous version, but it is a really nice addition. And I'll tell you, if you're a learner, the ability to auscultate with that clarity and reduction of background noise truly is invaluable. And when a lot of medical schools have students going out and buying silly otoscopes, which you will never use again since they're in the hospital, Buying a piece of tech like this that you can bring with you through your career actually makes a lot more sense. Another plug I wanna tell everyone that's almost like a little hack is that a lot of my colleagues have been able to get Echo Health devices through their CME funds. That means you may have money sitting around that you aren't using anyway, and you can upgrade yourself and experience it on your own. Now, the device is new, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as we get going, and expect a bit of an update review later on in the year because I'm gonna to continue to use this, put it to the test, and see how it actually functions for durability, long-term, Term battery use, and as software updates come out, see how that integrates and changes my experience. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.